Praise God. Such a sense of the Lord's presence this morning, confirmed by the prophetic word that was brought to us. And you know, many times when you think about it, we come to the house of the Lord Sunday mornings, and yet we've had a week of rubbing shoulders with individuals and sometimes we don't realize how sometimes we get contaminated and things that rub off them rub onto us and then we need to be washed again when we come into his presence and that's what happens in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning it's our praising him and worshiping him and out of that he comes and he washes us with his presence which is precious and again the prophetic word is profound realizing that God is speaking to us again the Christ of God speaks to his church and he is alive and relevant today I realize I thank Pastor Paul for the invitation to come here again we love coming here and we've been naughty we've been away we have been out ministering we had a wedding up in Durham and we've had a funeral down in Oakhampton so it has been a busy time but you know I notice one thing that the older I get the more I appreciate my Lord and my Savior I can't explain it I can't explain it but my blood washed heart is grateful to the Christ of God for all that he has done for me and we were at uh, uh, like a just relaxing time in the afternoon in my state park and uh, pastor steve was ministering he was singing to us all through the service and it was beautiful and in that time roy was at the side of me and he said oh he said let me read this to you and he had his bible and he read something to me and he said gosh i it i didn't realize that was there Roy." so i went home and i read it and i didn't realize that what he had brought me was in the word and you know, many times we come to the place where actually we, we, we miss things in the Word. And also, we forget things. This morning I'd like to read to you from uh, Romans chapter 5, actually. Just a few verses that are there. And Luther called the book of Romans the masterpiece of the New Testament. And Luther knew about this because of the doctrine, the teachings that the Apostle Paul brought us through the book of Romans. And in Romans chapter 5, for a few verses, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance character character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us for when we were still without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely would the righteous man would die yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die but God demonstrates his own love towards us uh, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by the blood, we can be saved from the wrath through him. For if we were enemies, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more? Having been rock reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. The reconciliation. Powerful words in a powerful part of the book of Romans. And yet I want to bring you to my pilot text, which I think is really profound. Because we find that in verse 8 of that chapter, but God demonstrated his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, 
astounds me, amazes me. In my sin, my wickedness, my evil ways, an enemy of Christ. It said, Christ died for us. Four words, four words. So this morning, I would like to actually bring you four things. I'd like to bring to you this morning, Christ the profound. I would like to bring you Christ the pronoun, Christ the provision, and Christ the providence. Because he died for me. Can we say that this morning together? He died for me. We need once again sometimes to go back to basics and understand the reality. And the songs that Pastor Paul brought us this morning were all about, were all about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Honoring Him, magnify Him, glorify in Him. Hallelujah. Do you know there are three words that change a person's life? When I first met Esther, we went out on our first date, and then we had a couple more dates and then something happened. Three words came out of my mouth towards Esther. I love you, 26 years of age. And you understand, many of you who are married. And then the reception that I had from her, well, I love you. Something happened in the dynamics of our relationship, in our courtship, that advanced to engagement and to marriage in 10 months. But you see it, it was I love you. And you know every day, I'm not boasting in this, well I am, hallelujah, right? Every day I tell Esther, I love you. And she says to me, I love you, 51 years later in our marriage. And we still have a kiss and a cuddle, which is beautiful, but those are three words. But I tell you what, there are four words that changed a person's eternal life and living. Christ died for me. I could understand about the world. As a young child, my mother was always raising me in the Anglican church, and uh, I would understand the things about Almighty God. I believed. I believed. And I believed that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. I believed. But I believed that I... Jesus died for the whole world. And when you think about that, it, it doesn't sort of filter down into continents and, and countries and, and communities and then people and then groups and then individuals. It took me 26 years to realize that the us, when he died for us, is for me personally. Can you say, for me personally? Well, say it. Died for me personally. And this is what we have here. I want to look at Christ, the pronoun. Because of him, he, Jesus, the Christ of God. You see, he is the name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ, our Lord God Almighty. He stands far above all because he's supreme and sovereign, the Almighty God. He holds the key of life. He's the life giver. Hallelujah. He's the bread of life because he's the strength of our life. He's also the water of life, the refreshment of our life. And he's the way, the truth, and the life, our guidance in life. He's the resurrection and the life, our restoration in life. And also, he's the light of the world, our illumination in life. He is everything to me. He is everything to us. He is the head of the church, the chief's cornerstone, and the capstone of everything and where we are. Christ our God. And that's what I love about the book of Ephesians, which is my favorite book in the Bible, I must be honest. And yet we find that in that book, there are descriptions about him, he, our Christ, because it says, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He, the Christ, has chosen us before the foundation of the world. He, the Christ, foreordained us to be adopted as his sons. He, the Christ, has accepted us in the beloved. He, the Christ, has redeemed us by his bread. He, the Christ, has lavished on us all wisdom and understanding. He, the Christ, made known to us the mystery of his will. And he, the Christ, helped us to obtain an inheritance 
uncorruptible, undefiled, reserved in heaven for you and me. He, the Christ, has sealed us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. He, the Christ, is pure, peerless, precious, and also he is wonderful. He, the Christ, is the lover of you and me every moment of every day. Even when we were sinners, he loved us. Even when we were in our sin, ungodly where we were. And yet he strongly, he, Christ strongly, powerfully, passionately loves the sinner today. In Bridgend, those who have no thought for him, the alcoholics, the drug addict, the prostitute, all that's going on in the filth, he loves them. He loves them. I'm blown away by this love of God. Praise God. I tell you what, he's the centerpiece of civilization. He is unparalleled. He is unique. He can answer prayers. He can actually fulfill his word. He can touch hearts this day. He can grow this church. He can change our lives. He can save marriages. He can bring revival to Wales. He can lift us up and liberate us. He is the miracle worker. This is the Christ of God. We serve. We humbly serve. We humbly follow. And sometimes we somehow slip away, perhaps I slip away in thought of every day, not recognize him. Although every morning we pray together, we read the word together, every night we pray together, and we pray for each one, pray for this fellowship. But sometimes in our day, involved in what we are doing, realizing that he's not there, but he's always there. He's always there. My pilot text said about this, uh, but God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we are sinners, Christ, Christ died. Christ died for you and for me. The second point that Christ is the profound. Oh, he died. He died. The champion of the Godhead, the right-hand son, the only begotten of the Father, died for you and me when we were in our sin. And for people today who were in their sin. You see, we're not saved from going to hell by the life of Jesus. Yes, it mentions the life of Jesus. And we're kept through his life every moment of every day. But you see, we're saved from going to hell by the death of Jesus. The profound truth and proof is this. And I just want to say it this morning for all of us. We were dead in trespass and sin. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. We were in darkness in our depravity. Yeah. Colossians 1.13. The God of this world had blinded our mind, the devil. John 12.40. We were separated from God. We were far from God, Ephesians 2.13. Yeah. We were captivated and bound by the law of sin and death. In John 8.36. Heathens, ungodly, sinners, but miracle of miracles. Oh, gracious, loving God. Miracles of miracles. Praise God. Father did not and has not disassociated himself with us because of our sin and our sinfulness and our ungodly ways. But he demonstrated his love towards us. That while we were sinners, his son Christ Jesus died for you and for me. His love is the royal law of love. He's the royal one. And in the royal law of love we find that I love it because it says in 1 John 4, 8, uh, for God is love. And you say, Dave, we know this. Yes, well, I'm reminding you. Sometimes I notice that with the revision of all those that were going through their examinations before they had their results, there was revision and they had to revise all things. And sometimes we need a revision of where we were, where we are, and where we are going. What he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Jesus, the center of our experience in where we are. This love of God refers to the very heart of the nature of Father God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father God just doesn't love. He is love. Totality. Love. He is the full expression of love. And this involves His grace, His mercy, His kindness, His goodness, His benevolence towards humanity, especially to sinners. The measure of His love is infinite. It has no boundaries. 
And that's why in Ephesians 3, 18 and 19, the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ with passes knowledge that you be filled with all the fullness of God. That's why when we are touched by him, he wants us to know all about him, that we will be filled with the love of God, the presence of God, that when people see us, what's the difference in you? What has made the change? It's Christ who died. And out of this, John 3, 16, so loved the world. He so loved us, friends. And he still loves us. The very nature of his being is love for you and me. The actions of his will, he chooses to love. He chooses to love us. He chooses to have grace and love and mercy upon us, which is amazing. Father God gave his only begotten son to die for us. Given his only begotten son. He died for us. He died for you. But making more personal friends, he died for me. The revelation of Jesus Christ dying for a person, personally, whoever it is, is the revelation that comes from the Father. Flesh and blood doesn't reveal it to us, but the Father in heaven. And there's a revelation that comes, and it changes and transforms our lives. Change my life. Transform my life. Oh, die chips. Oh, die butcher. Oh, die chops. Oh, became oh, die Bible. Hallelujah. And then living waters. Praise God. Praise God. I thank God for him. While we were yet sinners, First Peter two twenty four says, uh, "Who his own self bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to our sins, uh, should live unto righteousness." When he looks at us now, he sees not what we used to be, but he sees Jesus. He sees the Christ in us. Do you know, Jesus, our Lord, Christ, he is the magnificent substitute at Calvary. The doctrine or the teaching of substitution comes right from Genesis, right through to where we are now, and there's a lot in it. But mankind cannot and could not rid themselves of sin. Impossible, never mind where they are. No human being could save, let alone atone for somebody else. Impossible. Only God in the person of his son could become the sinner's substitute. Hallelujah. Taking my penalty, your penalty, your sin, my sin, your wrongs, my wrongs, that it should be actually you and me on the tree. Our substitute, our saviour. Christ conquered and utterly destroyed the power of the sleep of death. Do you remember he went to Lazarus? And he says, I go to Lazarus to wake him up. He has destroyed the shadow of death because the death is the last object and the last giant, as it were, in humanity, death. I took a funeral uh, on Wednesday last week. The crematorium was down at uh, Bodmin, and then the Thanksgiving service for the life of a lady known uh, as Ruth Mabel Down, the most insignificant little lady that you can ever imagine. But whoa, she was an atomic bomb and a peanut. She was a woman of the word. She was a woman of the prayer. Her three sons serve the Lord now in such a wonderful way. Her grandchildren serve the Lord. She has great grandchildren. The tribute took an hour and a half in where we were, and just half an hour the tribute of her life. But in everything, God was glorified. She had planned it all. She was 96. And 10 years ago, she had cancer. And she said, I do not want any treatment. My Lord will help me and bring me through. The Lord gave her 10 years. She didn't have one, one chemotherapy, or aromatherapy, or any other therapy that you can think of. And she was kept for 10 years. And she still praised the Lord. It was absolutely amazing. The shadow of death. There has to be light when there's a shadow. And Jesus is the light of the world. The sorrow of death. As, uh, as uh, David the psalmist said, the sorrow of death compasses me. It's like being tied down with rope. And also when you think about the snare of death, which is like a, a snare of an animal. And also the sting of death. But what happens, we can say, when it comes to right at the end of 1 Corinthians 15, when we look at the sleep of death, the shadow of death, the sorrow of death, the snare of death, the sting of death, oh, death, because of Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary. Oh, death, where is your strength? Oh, grave, where is your victory? 
The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, who gives us the victory, through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Whoa, praise God. While we were at sinners, Christ died. 1 Peter 1.18, knowing that we were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, from your aimless conduct received by the traditions from your father, but with the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you know, medical history has come such a long way when it comes to the blood. It's so clever. DNA is absolutely amazing. And you know, when he gave his blood, we now are linked to him through the blood. We carry his DNA. Hallelujah. Jesus living in us. Jesus living in you. Praise God. We have his DNA. We are sons of the almighty God. Praise him. We don't shout boastfully about it when we're out in community. But when we're in this house, we can say, thank you, Lord. Rejoice in him who brought us this way. Oh, praise God. Charles Wesley penned this, penned this hymn. It's hymn number 175 in the Methodist hymn book. I have a Methodist hymn book, actually, Margaret. You'd be like to know that, Beth Lake. But this is what he said. Charles said this. O love divine, what hast thou done? The immortal God has died for me. The Father's co-eternal Son bore all my sin upon the tree. The immortal God for me has died. My Lord, my love, is crucified. Is crucified for me and you to bring us rebels back to God. Believe, believe the record true. We all are bought with Jesus' blood. Pardon for all flows from his side. My Lord, my Lord is crucified. Christ, the profound, died. But also, my third point is that Christ, the provision. This word for. And I meditated on this. This word for. You see, for reminds us of God's forgiveness for our sins and being forgiven of all our sins. Only Jesus can say in Luke 5.20 to the man who's paralyzed and was lowered through the roof that David wonderfully has brought to us in, in, a, in two sermons, you know what I mean? As they lowered him down, which was amazing, right? That when he looked at him, he said, your sins are forgiven. No one else can forgive our sins, but forgiveness means to be pardoned. To spare someone, Isaiah 55, 7, for he will abundantly pardon. Micah 7, 18, who is the God unto thee that pardons iniquity? Psalm 103, verse 3, who forgives all sins? You see, forgiveness is the promise of the Father through the provision of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's the proclamation of the Word of God, which is absolutely wonderful in the Bible. And it's the practice of the church. Forgiveness. Only after receiving Father God's pardon and His forgiveness can we honestly and sincerely and truly forgive others. Colossians 3.13 says, Bearing one another and forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. This means to show kindness continually to others, to give freely to others, and to grant someone else forgiveness. I think we have to go a long way for that. But you see, what we have to remember is this. When it comes to the place when Jesus the Christ died, for us. Our death sentence was cancelled, forgiven. Our arrest warrant was cancelled, forgiven. Our record of wrongs was cancelled, forgiven. Our offence to Father God, which was truly a mammoth offence, cancelled, forgiven. Our deserved punishment was cancelled, Forgiven. What a person receives, when a person receives, when you and I receive forgiveness, you, me, and everyone else can never forget it. Hallelujah. 
And Father God will not forsake us. Hebrews 13, 8. In the light of Jesus, he said, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Christ, our provision for Christ died for. And my last point in where we are this morning. But God demonstrated his love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Whenever I talk to anybody, I'll come over with David and Margaret. We've been friends for years. But when I talk about you and me, and when you say about you and me, we talk about the me, right? Because that's who we are. When we're together, it's us, but you and me. It's nice to oh, you and me, or you and I. Do you know what I mean? It's lovely. But there's something here. There is no greater miracle than the miracle of being saved and rescued from going to hell and a lost eternity. Amen? There is no greater joy than the joy of forgiveness. Amen? And also, there's no greater truth than the truth that Jesus Christ died, not just for us, but for me. Moi, individually. Hallelujah. Choice is the door of opportunity, which is wonderful. When we choose to ask Father God to forgive us, of our sins. That's a big ask, our sinfulness, our wrongs, our wicked ways. When we choose to ask Jesus into our life to become our Savior, when we choose to ask for faith to face the future in where we are, our Heavenly Father makes everything He has in His awesome power at our disposal. Pastor, leading the church, the responsibilities of all that goes on, need to pray for Him. But God is with him, at his disposal, helping him, leading him, guiding him. You and me and where we are in family and situations, asking God to help us, lead us and guide us. He's with us, friends. It's wonderful to think that the almighty God of creation, the Christ of God who died for you and for me, actually, intimately waits for us every day to acknowledge him in where we are and what we're doing and where we're going. Every moment of every day. Do you know we still ask the Lord for a car park? Lord, lead us to a car park. We went somewhere the other day. I couldn't believe we could not get in. It was unbelievable. And we went round, and we went around twice. And we said, Lord, we're sure of you. And the little car came up right in front of us, popped in. Oh, thank you, Lord. Do you know we say, do you know we, we say a table grace in our house? We do. We thank the Lord for our food. We do. We thank him for them. Yes, Asda's is great, and, and Sainsbury's, and Tesco's. But we thank God for the food. And even when we pray, we thank God for you and for one another and for our family that the Lord will make a way. Prayer is wonderful because the Christ is intimately interested in you and me. Me, me, me. Say it, me, say it. Come on, me, me. Hallelujah. The providence of his guaranteed son, providence in where we are with us and with me is the foreseeing care and guidance of God for you, the child of God, guiding you and me through our journey of faith and accomplishing his purpose in you and me, helping us be shaped and sharpened into the Christian to become Christ-like. That's his product. That's his aim in where we are. Let me just give you a few things of the blessing that God gives to me. And perhaps I can share it with you, and then you, in your own time, can read and share it. He is my almighty God as a guardian. In 2 Timothy 1.12, For I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed here to him until that day. Also, he's the one that gives me overflowing blessings. I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed with my friends, with my family, with this church, and with other people that I know. I am so blessed. I shouldn't be here. Most of my mates are dead. I'm the only one living. And that's the grace of God, the love of God, because Christ died for me. Yeah. Die chops, die chips, die Bible, living waters, me now. Psalm 23, 5, you prepare a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Hallelujah. I don't like a half cup, I like a full cup. Praise God. Also, he gives to me the treasures out of his goodness. His goodness follows me 
every day, all the way. Psalm 31, 19. Oh, how sweet is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear him, which you have prepared for those who trust you in the presence of men. Oh, praise God. He's so good to me. And you know, he has given me a heavenly inheritance. Praise God. Stephen and Rachel think they got, Ross, my son and daughter, you know Stephen well, they think they're going to get millions out of me. <laughs> we ain't got two pennies to rub together. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've got a bungalow, praise God, they're going to have half each when the time comes, but I want to tell you something, my heavenly inheritance, oh, hallelujah, i got a bungalow here, but i got a mansion up there, praise God, I don't care if it's the coal shed, just to be around him is wonderful, praise God, because it says in John 14, in my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to a prepare a place for you, me, you, hallelujah. Coming to a close. He cares for me. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him. Because he cares for you. He cares for me. And also when you think about it in times of trouble. And there are troubles sometimes. In Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. He's in control. Hallelujah. He's in control. Praise God. This all ranting and raving about uh, the, the ex-prime minister, I'm sorry, president, uh, uh, where he is in America. But let me tell you something. There's something wonderful. But you know, never mind if you're a prime minister or a president or a pauper. If you give your life to Christ, he looks after you. I got a wonderful person that looks after me. It's Esther. Oh, she's my darling. She's my... She's my friend, she's my fantasy, she's my lover, she's my wife, she's my partner, she's everything. And boy, she's a good cook, that's why I'm fat. And the last one, he always protects me. He's so faithful in protecting me, I can tell you that now. 2 Timothy 4.18, the Lord will deliver me from the evil work which... Uh, I'm sorry, the, the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. May I say this this morning? I can truly say from the bottom of my blood-washed heart this morning that David Waters truly, publicly and privately, is thankful to Almighty God sending his son Jesus Christ to die for me. And without a shadow of doubt, Christ the pronoun, he. Christ the profound, died. Christ the provision for Christ the providence me. Today, friends, I don't realize or I don't know uh, if this word is applicable to your heart this morning, but my prayer is this, that the Lord will brand this word once again refreshingly into our heart. Christ died for us, but more wonderful, Christ died for me. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the name which is above every name. So I say to you this day, if you haven't put your trust in the Lord Jesus, I don't know you all. It's important that you do that. And he's only a prayer away. But as you trust in him, it says, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. It says that before you go into the ladies' toilet on the cabinet there. And friends, we need today to keep putting our trust in the Lord because he will make a way. Amen. Amen.